Good morning, friends. Stephen Bernoon here with Israeli News Live. And, boy, things are just heated up everywhere on this planet. Uh, it is September the 12th, 2024. We're going to be looking at Ukraine, Israel, Hezbollah situation there. Uh, and even uh, uh, a little bit on the storm that hit uh, Homa, Louisiana last night. A hurricane class two, in fact, as it come on shore. Uh, let's get started with Ukraine, though. Ukraine is nearly out of U.S. missiles, according to a U.S. official. Ukraine received several hundred uh, ATACMS uh, missiles, most of which have now been used. As we already know, Ukraine is seeking to get those long-range missiles in there, and they're seeking uh, permission from the United States to use those on targets inside the mainland Russia. Uh, you know, when it comes to this situation, I'm more neutral in this, but, uh, you know, I can understand why Ukraine would want to strike inside of Russia, because... They're tired of getting bombed inside of their own country. But at the same time, I think NATO is the one pulling the strings on this. It's not really Ukraine that wants to strike inside of Russia. I think it's NATO. NATO is looking at a strategic plan, in my view there, to be able to cut Russian supply lines off while they're inside of Ukraine and then obliterate the soldiers that are there. Whether they're going to bomb them into oblivion or not still remains. I don't know the answer to that. Anyway, a small group of White House officials have been holding talks on expanding the area with Russia that Ukraine can hit with U.S.-supplied weapons. That comes out on the Kiev Independent uh, as they put, put that one out there. CNN did a very interesting special here of soldiers uh, inside of Ukraine that are former prisoners. They've been given an option to serve in the military in exchange for their release if they Into survive. Into a village on the eastern Listening. front. But these aren't career soldiers. They're ex-convicts who volunteered from prison, got some basic training, and were thrust into battle. Vitaly, 41 years old, 10 years in jail for theft and violent assault, now assaulting Vladimir Putin's army. <laughs> the ex-convicts are part of Ukraine's 59th Brigade. They're camped near the front line, rudimentary, but a lot better than jail. Our conversations remain basic about survival or death. <laughs> Many are dying here. On There's both one sides. point I the want you to be able to see in this video, video showing Russians fleeing a burning house as the ex convicts attack. And we're but almost admits to it. They are suffering casualties as well. Gordon and, and many of those here is in it. He refrains force defending the key logistic hub, Pokrovsk. Pokrovsk is not one of the main, really heavy munitions ever impacting, especially in the evenings. And that's when the medics from the 68th Mount Gear Brigade start receiving most of the heavy casualties. They show us this video of a U.S.-supplied Max Pro armored vehicle hit by a Russian drone. Two killed, four severely injured. Casualties Ukraine's military, already badly outmanned, cannot afford. The medic, who goes by the call sign Barbarian, tells me. As you can see, not only is it equipment that they're lacking, but they're outnumbered 20 to 1. Russia definitely not playing around when it comes to this war here. And these prisoners, again, just becoming cannon fodder on the front lines. Uh, but because of their prison ways and the reason they ended up in prison to start with seeming to be able to survive better than those that uh, that 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 on the other hand were never in prison. Uh, Russian army ousted Ukrainian troops from 10 settlements in the Kursk region. This came out uh, a couple of hours ago there and it just goes to show Russia if you're 20 to 1 on the ground there it's not hard to oust the enemy out of the lines there. 
On August 6th, 6th, the Ukrainian armed forces launched an offensive aimed at seizing territory in the Kursk region, but their advance was halted. Russian Chief General Staff Valery uh, Gersimov said, Russian battle group Sever, Sever has liberated 10 settlements in the Kursk region in two days. The Russian army, army <clears throat> excuse me, the Russian Ministry of Defense was reported. Uh, so, you know, just goes to show that when you've got the firepower to be able to do it and you got the manpower, you can do a lot with that. And uh, Russia has slowly but surely uh, really drove out the uh, the ability of Ukrainian forces. And of course, Ukraine is not alone. Ukraine has used a lot of mercenary forces, but now even the mercenary forces are not wanting to join this battle because they know it's just a slaughter. It's not a matter of will you die, it's just a matter of when. Uh, and very, very few survivors are being reported in this war with such massive, massive casualties. Let's move on uh, going into other issues here. Um, Sputnik reporting here about, uh, let's see, risk hot war with Russia as Biden mole stepping on Ukraine long range missiles. Uh, it's a tripwire as being reported. Listen to a former CIA analyst, uh, Larry Johnson, as he speaks about this here with Sputnik News has shifted every single position that he said was a red line. So I don't see why he's not going to violate this one as well. So, yeah, I think they're, they're going, uh, they can't afford a defeat, a Ukrainian defeat before the election. That's what they're worried about. And so they're trying to prevent that. And so they've, they've convinced themselves that if they just give in and provide these uh, long distance uh, you know, uh, missiles that will strike farther inside of Russia, that it will help Ukraine, help uh, put the Russians on, on their heels. I mean, it's incredibly dangerous and, and, and foolish. And, you know, it's up to, uh, to Russia to figure out how, how long it's going to continue to put up with this. You know, the, uh, I guess I, understand, I appreciate uh, President Putin's desire to... Uh, show restraint and keep this as a special military operation, but the West is at war with Russia. And I don't think, you know, people aren't getting their brains around that. We keep we keep dancing around the edges pretending that this is not going to happen. It's going to happen. And it's it's not going to change the military situation as far as what Ukraine is facing. Ukraine is facing defeat. They will be defeated. But it's it gets more to the point that the West, instead of seeking a peaceful way out and talking to Russia, is, is uh, preferring uh, confrontation. That really says it all. Uh, and that is really going to put us into a very precarious situation. Even when you look at this article here in TASS, uh, Russian news agency Putin Xi Jinping provides strategic guidance for Russia-China relations, according to a top diplomat. Says strong relations of mutual trust and deep friendship have been established between Chinese President Xi Jinping and Mr. Putin. You are ex exercising strategic guidance of China-Russia relations at the highest level, the top diplomat uh, said. When you're dealing with strategic uh, relationship with Russia and China, that's basically both of them saying, I'll have your back. If China goes into Taiwan and they're going to face the United States Navy on the, uh, on the southeast uh, seas there uh, with China and Taiwan or, or the Pacific there region, China is expecting Russia then will have their back. And of course, if NATO strikes Russia from the, their western side, Russia is expecting that China will have its back. So there are very strategic relationships being built, these two alliances, two very powerful superpowers there. And when you combine them together, it puts a very... Uh, very serious situation for the United States to be dealing with this. Sputnik News also reporting here, Israel not prepared for Hezbollah's second front. Uh, and there is some 
suggestions there that Hezbollah may open a second front against Israel amid Tel Aviv's war with Hamas. Former British diplomat and MI6 agent Alistair Crook told Sputnik's News Rules podcast. Um, now, he says here, there has been some direct military intervention. Former British diplomat MI6 agent Alistair Crook told Sputnik, Hezbollah a few days ago, two or three days ago, destroyed three Israeli radar base posts. These were in uh, Sheba Farms area, which is recognized as Lebanese territory, but it's occupied by Israel. Uh, let's take a look at some of what he had to say here on this broadcast there with Sputnik. You know, the Hamas operation has been well planned, fairly well planned, very well uh, executed in, in its concept. What they've now seen is the sort of greatest military power of the, uh, of the Middle East, the technological um, leader of, of the, you know, whose technology is the greatest, you know, completely collapse in front of a small group of, of Hamas. This is the most difficult Gaza, I know it well, is a shambolic urban setting. And how do you go? You go in there. If Hezbollah joins this um, conflict, opens a front, this would present an existential threat to the future of Israel. You are what? Hmm. An existential threat to the future state of Israel if Hezbollah opens a front. Basically saying that Israel would be outgunned uh, because of the fact they have all their military down in Gaza trying to totally level that particular city there. Uh, and speaking of leveling that city there, a very tragic situation. Uh, body parts thrown everywhere. Israel strikes school used as a shelter in Gaza. RT is reporting here. Oh. Let's take a look at what RT had to say on this report. Violations of international humanitarian law. Now that's the charge levied by the UN Secretary General after Israel once again targeted a school turned shelter in central Gaza, killing at least 18 people. That includes two children and six workers from the United Nations. Just tragic. Hashtag Gaza. Six UNRWA colleagues killed today when two airstrikes hit a school in its surroundings in Nusrat in the middle areas. This is the highest death toll among our staff in a single incident. This school has been hit five times since the war began. It is home to around 12,000 displaced people, mainly women and children. No one is safe in Gaza. No one is spared. And disturbing pictures here of the aftermath of the Israeli strike. Uh, you will see uh, people digging. It is a very tragedy again uh, in Gaza where Israel just continually pounds uh, relentlessly uh, this uh, small group here. And, and sadly, they're, may, they're taking the toll out on the population. Uh, the, the Hamas being targeted, it's almost become a joke. This is really to drive these people out of Gaza. That seems to be the ultimate goal that Israel has, not trying to root out Hamas. They could have gone in militarily on the ground and rooted out Hamas. Uh, Israel, by the way, also striking uh, in Lebanon. Uh, just some footage here recently of some of the strikes that happened last night. <laughs> situation constantly escalating in all directions around the world. Uh, as we also turn our focus back here to the United States, Hurricane Francine of 2024, uh, a storm to remember, according to Weather Monitor there, uh, is talking about how the, this came on in Homa, Louisiana, and uh, struck there with winds uh, at a Category 2 uh, which would be uh, winds of, of around 95 or, or plus miles per hour. Some of the video footage here uh, shown as the eye wall come across Oma, Louisiana. Uh, strong, very strong winds, not like a Cat 3 or Cat 4 uh, hurricane, but still uh, very strong winds to say the least there. So, uh, Anyway, I'm sure there'll be a lot of downed trees, a lot of power uh, line outages there. Home of Louisiana, very, very low-lying 
uh, city there when it comes to the sea level there. So I'm sure the storm surge and flooding will be very devastating once those reports begin to come in. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, also, just a quick reminder, I want to share this clip from last night that I did about uh, a, a very dear friend who came on John Moore's radio broadcast the other week and shared with us his amazing testimony of what LifeWave has done for this guy. Incredible, incredible story there. Uh, I want you to listen just quickly on that. And if it's something that you decide you want and you need, just go to our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Our website actually has where you can join uh, when it comes to uh, being able to get the products there. Check out LifeWave right there. Or you can also support the broadcast. And you can check out, uh, if you haven't already seen this video here, Betrayed by Medical Freedom Community. Um, my father-in-law is the guy right there in the middle. Carrie to the left, my wife to the right there, uh, who was lost his life due to this tragic treatment that was given to him. Definitely take a look at that. You can also read the article, The Open Letter to the Five Docs. I encourage you to read that. It's very important that you read that letter there. And comment. Share your comments with us, what you feel. I know that there are some people that have, that have very few, but some have commented, you know, you know, why would you tarnish her reputation? <laughs> are you serious? Think about it. Tarnish her reputation? This is not even a case of malpractice or negligence. This was determined by two, so far, two pathologists to be a homicide. So uh, you don't publicly announce your prescription two months before with Dr. Northrup of a five to six milliliters of peroxide in a 500 mil IV bag and then come to our house and do 21 mils. Not only do we have two text proofs of that, I personally witnessed her telling me how she does it not having any clue myself what the proper protocol was, just believing and trusting her. Because as you see, we thought Carrie to be a friend. She would stayed with us on, on several occasions already before that. So we did trust her. Only to find out by, and not only that, even the Saponero group, their own physicians writing, irreversible damage. I still deal with it myself because I was injected as well as my wife and I bruised so easily. I mean, just bump my arms and the bruising is massive because my veins are so weak from that treatment. So, but my father-in-law, he got it more than me and my wife did. And so therefore he succumbed to that. Uh, so anyway, check out, though, listen to this here, amazing testimony there from uh, uh, Scott as he came on and shared his testimony, what LifeWave X39 has done for him. Um, X39 LifeWave, six months now. Six months. And um, I went to see my doctor about a month ago, and he told me, uh, you're no longer pre-diabetic. I said, well, that's good. He said, and your blood pressure is per the lady said, your blood pressure is perfect. And I was blown away because it hasn't been perfect for 10 years. <laughs> and um, they're both uh, interested in LifeWave now. I'm not sure if they're connected with it yet. And then I went to my eye doctor, and um, I told him that I heard that about a lady who had her cataracts fall out of her eyes, out of one of her eyes. I heard Steve talking about it, and he just started laughing. And then he started looking for my cataracts, and he couldn't find them. And then I started laughing. And um, so I don't have cataracts anymore. No surgery, I don't need anything. I'm, I'm sure it was X-39 that did that for me, thank God. By the way, friends, one last thought I totally forgot to sh share with you. On Patreon, I had loaded last night the teaching on being born again. 
<clears throat> then I realized this morning I only loaded the second half. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot that I had to pause the recording and I had to reload. Uh, so it's actually, I got to correct that. I'm going to correct that here in just a few minutes and load that as well. So it is going into the depth of the new birth um, in a way that maybe you haven't really considered. Also a way to help you to overcome some of these obstacles in life that you didn't know you could overcome. So I really encourage you to watch that there. Um, so anyway, I'll get the part, first part of that put on there and get it reloaded. I deleted the original one there. Also to this one here, if you have never subscribed to um, our, our channel here, we are I'm dedicated to re, really putting out some very good content. This one here, what really happened to General Soleimani will blow you away. Very short, very to the point, but you're going to see something there that you have never seen before. Not to mention, we're going to be doing some updates on the Third Temple um, and that construction continuing on the inter internal parts that they're making for that. Anyway, God bless you. Have a great day.